Here we are for the final tour of Worthington Farms. That's right folks, this is the last episode of a very British park. I might even shed a tear. Since the last episode, I did some tidying up and added the last few details to the park. Without further ado, it's time for the tour. So, over to me at Worthington Farms. Welcome back to episode 13 of A Very British Park. It's funny because I'm talking like like how I do in the in the episode. God, I'm hilarious. Welcome everyone. This is me talking off script for the first time. Highly stressful. I now have to actually um think about what I'm doing and not just read it. We are about to do a tour of Worthington Farms. Very exciting. I felt like the best place to start would be out in our exterior, which we built uh, very first off. So here we are at the vehicle tunnel that brings all the car, our imaginary cars, in to the map. So pretending we're in our little car, that's very low down. There we go. Driving on the left, of course, being in the UK, because we're strange like that. Here we are. So we've got a junction. Uh, with some blank signs uh, left blank because when we created the park I didn't want to label it as a specific part of the UK obviously we've got uh, England Wales Scotland Northern Ireland and then Southern Ireland as a separate country but I didn't want to put it on there so it's just it's just um artistic license is that even the right phrase i've got no idea what i'm talking about but if you want to download this park you can put your own town or village names on this sign and make it your own uh which you are more than welcome to do once i've updated it all on the workshop which i will definitely do and will not procrastinate in the meantime over here we've got a little farm i mean none of this is ever really seen it should it was just to kind of have some something in the background at the point that i was building this i was i was trying to keep peace count relatively low probably use too much tmtk if anything but there we go it's a nice little detail to the edge of the park i, I even i made these silos myself i mean as opposed to everything else i made in the park but i'm happy with these silos so just let me have this if we turn left at the junction past the pigeon on the ground we come round to hey, another sign, and this one's got writing on it. It says Worthington Farm because I couldn't fit the S on, so that's what it is. Hey, maybe it was just a clerical error with the council. Who knows? But there it is. It's brown because in the UK, um, attractions, so things like parks and zoos and that kind of thing, are all brown signs. So a bit gross, but that's what it is. In the background we've got some hills mainly just to um just to help with sight lines so that when you're in the park you can't see the the blank nothingness that is actually on the other side because spoiler alert there's nothing here but let's just pretend you don't know that so then you come down here and it brings us to our car parks on the left first of all we have our staff car park I've not populated either of the car parks with cars because it just seems like a waste of peace count. Just use your imagination, okay? Um, so this is our staff car park. I think this is probably big enough. Maybe. If we assume some people might be coming in from the local train station or being dropped off by family or friends. I'm thinking about this way too much. Anyway, a couple of zebra crossings that take you across this uh, road to the other side. And then from this point, they can either go all the way down here to the uh, main entrance and ticket offices so all of the, uh, the ticket staff will go that way if they go down this way we come out at the admin buildings and warehouse um, so yeah in here would be your admin offices and maybe like entertainment rehearsal rooms accounting blah 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 all that kind of stuff if you very dangerously hop down onto the road cross the loading bay you'll come to the warehouse uh, so you can jump up here and that's your access into the warehouse there is a path down the side here that takes you around to the rest of the app and stuff but i th i think we should come back to that a bit later that's quite a nice view of rewind there that no one would ever see apart from staff and delivery drivers so isn't that a nice treat for them um so yes as i said we'll come back to that uh, when we're in the vicinity within the park because it makes more sense so delivery drivers would come down here um, to deliver to the warehouse and then this is their their way in through the barrier 
if you turn right at the barrier, you come into the main car park. Um, Size-wise, pretty happy with this. I think we worked out at the start that it's it's probably about half the size of the park, which seems about right. Might even need to be bigger. But I'm in my head, the, the when the park was built, they probably envisaged it being quite small. They didn't see it being this big. Uh, so obviously they could always look into expanding into uh, the local fields. Up the front, we've of course got our disabled bays, very important, which then brings us nicely into the main entrance. We've got our wonderful sign here, Worthington Farms. The park itself was named by KOS Nova. Look at me, I've got all my names written down here. I'm so efficient, it's painful. So KOS Nova, we have to thank for the wonderful name of our, our park. Um, before we go in, we've just got the guest services over to the right here, which is one of the well, it was the very first building uh, we made. I'm going to be very blunt. I'm not happy with the interior, but I'm also not a big fan of doing interiors in Planet Coaster. For that, you want someone like Nerd Chacho, whose his interiors are absolutely insane. So definitely go and check him out if you haven't already. But in here we have, uh, well, starting from in here. To the unassuming eye, this might look like an electrical cupboard, but it's actually our spawn point. So that's where the guests come in, as you can just see. There she goes. Bless her little socks. In here, we have a staff room. There they are, chilling out. We also have ATMs and an information desk. Now, retrospectively, I now realise that they can't function because guests won't use anything on this side of the ticket gates, which are, of course, in the... The, where, the, where they should be over there so um, in order for that to work what I could have done is put a ticket booth uh, just in front of the spawn point but uh, again it is what it is and it doesn't matter we, I, as you may have discovered I will always go for aesthetics over practicality that should be my, my slogan but I think that looks nice we've got our information booth there where you can get um, your maps and maybe some umbrellas Let's get into the park, that's why we're here. We are of course pre-booked, we are VIPs. In we go to our lovely little plaza. What nice flower beds. So we built this in episode two, I think. Don't quote me on that. Trying to be helpful, but probably completely wrong. Which then brings you straight out to our train, uh, the Worthington Express, which was named by Mission Coaster. So thank you very much for that. Went for kind of the industrial train yard vibe here, hence the name train yard, um, which also matches the, the kind of raw metallic feel of Risk, our Eurofighter, just behind it. Um, so that was the vibe I was going for there. But we'll talk more about Risk when we get around to it. So here's our train. I think we'll save riding the train till the end because obviously it'll just be a bit of a giveaway seeing everything right at the start. And unless, of course, you've watched all the episodes which you should have done and, and then you should know everything but there we go i'm waffling once again so we're going to start off going to our left where we come to rewind one of our most recent additions to the park rewind was named by density 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 is the kind of name that i feel like it should be announced loudly you know what i mean like um here we go <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen please welcome to the stage density you know, that kind of thing. There you go. You can now save that as a little soundbite density. You're welcome. Uh, so there we go. Rewind, aptly named and chosen because, well, it goes one way and it goes back the other way. So it made the most sense to me. Really happy with this like, nice little plaza. So let's jump in. If we go down the queue, first off, we come to an access gate, uh, which gets you into the ride area where we have power and lots of overgrown shrubbery. Obviously, this gate would be closed, but I like to keep gates open ajar. Uh, just to indicate that's what they are, basically. And we've got an auto save, everyone. Hold on tight. Hold on tight. Hold on. Will we make it through? I think we've made it through. Standard cattle pen. Hue. Round, 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 round. Until we go straight up onto the station. Where the coaster is waiting for us. So let's just hop on and have a ride of Rewind.
And there we have it. That was our Vacoma boomerang named Rewind. Let's hop off, open that back up to the public. And away we go. Exit is just down here, past our lovely coaster operators booth and back round to this little plaza. As you may have noticed on ride, the train comes out of the station there and comes right past the coaster track, which is really nice interaction there, which brings you to this little service road as well. So this is to allow access for vehicles into the ride area for the boomerang. I'm not entirely sure of its full use case because in terms of um, coaster removal for repair, because you'll see there's no transfer tracks or maintenance shed for this ride, um, the coaster would be taken off the track, uh, probably by a lorry parked out here on the road with a crane to lift it off and then taken to a, a shed somewhere, uh, either on site or off site. But that's the plan with that. Um, so in terms of this actual access, it's probably for groundskeeping because they're clearly doing a great job. Nice little view of the back of the admin buildings, which we'll come to very shortly. Let's hop back into this view. There we go. Who have we got here? DPM04. Very good timing, DPM, because DPM uh, named this ride. Swooping Seagull is our KMG afterburner. Uh, so we won't ride it, but let's have a little saunter down the queue line around the back of Worthy's Fish and Ships. As you can see over there, that is uh, Onyx Wildcat dressed as a pirate doing what they do best. As you'll know if you've already watched every other episode, um, it's a low budget park. They don't have masses of funding, so very little money goes into the theming side of the park. So it's more what they can achieve for as little money as possible. Hence why you've just got little touches like this. It's just a piece of netting with some, some wood poles. Very easy to achieve, just thrown together in a workshop. Just about sells uh, a rough beachy theme for this area, which I think came together really nicely. Um, again, just shoving a ship's wheel on a building some beach huts all very easily achieved on site with some uh, some decent carpenters that's the vibe we were going for since last week i added some speakers around the park we have beach hut snacks uh which uh, we've got a pizza pen cosmic cow and this is just a tmtk coca-cola because i like to keep some real life brands popping up throughout the park through these gates takes you to the admin area so we were down there earlier by the warehouse and this is the other end now so this service road here is lovely and wide because this is our main access into the park. So service vehicles would come down here and then into the park where there is a, a lovely wide path. Oh, oh that's lovely and flickery. Um, where there's a lovely wide path all the way around the edge and through the middle as well to allow full access to vehicles. And then uh, the garbage truck is there because they would need access up to here, which is our little maintenance area. So this would be maintenance and groundskeeping where they've got all their port cabins. Lots and lots of bins and dumpsters and then we've got bin covers and also where we have all of our on-site utility vehicles that would be making the trips around the park, collecting trash, replacing bits and pieces that get broken, etc, etc. So this is this area here, just some random gubbins around the back, some radioactive materials there. Not sure what that's doing there, but we don't ask questions. I see this building as maybe being the staff communal areas, uh, things like canteen, stuff like that, uh, which links directly through to the warehouse as well. Nice skylight on top to let some light into the building. So moving around the corner, we've got our eating area for Worthy's Fish and Chips, because what British park is complete without fish and chips? It's a very odd shaped building, I will say, but it goes along with the whole vibe that the park would probably have seen the space and wanted to fill it as best they could so they threw together this <laughs> odd shaped structure and uh, around here we've got the backstage area which you've got the uh, access in to what would probably be a kitchen and then you've got like your cold store uh, that kind of stuff obviously staff toilets blah 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 so I do kind of map a rough layout in my head when I'm building these things just to make sure I'm getting the size right just behind us we have our Top spin, which is called Rolling Tide. Technically called Rolling Tide of Doom, thanks to Onyx Wildcat, our lovely pirate. 
Um, I did actually leave the sign there. There it is. So at any point, just drop that bad boy down, <laughs> and we got rolling tide of doom. That made me laugh. So, I, uh, yeah, I kept it there. So yes, this is our Hus top spin. Again, it's got a nice little plaza, a couple of benches, and then we've got the queue line. It's only a short queue. As you can see, it's not the most popular ride. Um, I've only let 200 guests in, uh, mainly because I just wanted to add some kind of life to the park, but I didn't want to kill any FPS in the process. As we all know, guests are a killer of FPS. Something I did off camera whilst building this ride was the water jets that you can see there. Uh, if it will let me click it, let me click it. There we go. Uh, there's a full sequence that runs for the whole duration of the ride, um, cutting off at certain points to a lower jet. Uh, might not, oh no, it seems to be working. No, it doesn't. So yeah, if you're not here for the whole ride, it won't work. Something about timing and mm, blah, 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 nonsense. But if you're here from the start, you'll see the jets uh, are timed perfectly to miss the, uh, the gondola as it comes down. Okay, so leaving Rolling Tide of Doom, we have a little service road here, and this is a special one. Um, I really enjoyed doing this. So around the back of our top spin, you will find a lovely little water treatment plant. Um, I don't work in the theme park industry, so I don't know uh, what kind of facilities would be in place to power the water jets or treat the water. So I just kind of made up my own little thing. It's probably far more intense than what would be there but maybe in my in the back of my head I like to assume that the water that's being sprayed far too close to my face is um, not just stagnant but hey wishful thinking eh so that is that really enjoyed building that and there's power for the ride there as well and this is all situated in a lovely little maintenance area um, wanted to put this in the middle of this area of the park um, to facilitate any repairs that need to happen of anything nearby. Got a nice little gazebo to do some work under, to make sure things are kept dry. As I said in the video, I like to take random bits and pieces from the park um, to, to, to give the impression that it's been taken out for repair, stuff like that. So these themed barrels or these ride signs. Also a nice backstage look at the Enterprise up there, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. Next up, we come to Risk, our Eurofighter 320 which was named by Gorilla Gump. So thank you very much for that. Risk is, as I said, a Gerslauer Eurofighter. We've got the access into the ride area here, uh, which takes you to a nice little maintenance shed and transfer tracks, which I'm quite happy with. Um, this screenshot actually was shown by Frontier the other day, which is very nice. The theme for this ride, I went with kind of a construction site vibe mainly because I was trying to think of something that would be appropriate for a park of this scale and budget um, to theme a ride adequately. So uh, what's easier than just leaving things half finished? Hence why you'll see uh, the raw concrete, uh, the rebar, that kind of thing. So let's head down the queue line. Goes all the way down here, then into a cattle pen. Zoop, 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 zoop. There we go. Into the coaster station. Very alarming that I can hear kind of nervous laughter slash whimpering, but can't see anyone. It's extremely unsettling. Anyway, let's <laughs> let's ride this ride. There we have it. That is 
our Eurofighter 320 called Risk. So we head out the exit down here, which then takes us pretty much back to the entrance. Then just behind us, we have the ride sign for Risk. So the idea with this was to go with the, the cheap idea again. Uh, what would they do to, to create a, a fancy looking ride sign for, for low money? And I figure they probably have an old utility van laying around that maybe doesn't work properly anymore. And they've just whacked a sign on the basket of the cherry picker. Quite happy with that. Does the trick very nicely with Worthington Farms Limited on the arm. Which matches the colour scheme perfectly of the bunker. So the bunker is a walkthrough experience. Uh, I wanted to do something different. Didn't want to do just a standard dark ride. Thought I'd shake it up a bit. I won't go through the bunker now because it already exists in two different videos. So you can either watch episode eight, which is the build process along with the POV, or you can just find the bunker as a standalone POV on my channel. You can click the card in the top right now to watch the POV. Very happy with how this build turned out. Um, lots of nice backstage details. So on the roof, uh, we've got things like the water tank, uh, roof access, this missile statue centerpiece type thing, uh, all secured down to the roof. The back of the bunker comes out uh, here, which is kind of the back end of the park. What you often find in a lot of parks right near the, the perimeter is a just kind of forgotten bit where they're not really trying too hard. You've got the bare concrete walls. They're like, you're at the, the edge of the park. <laughs> what do you expect? Uh, so that's the vibe I'm going here. It's normally like quite quiet, a bit peaceful as the train slowly disappears. Uh, so that's the vibe I was going for here. All these fire exits are lined up properly. So if you go through here, it does take you into the missile silo where there is a fire exit there. I always like to make sure those are really functioning. So whilst we're around here, let's go to our most recent addition. So just across the train tracks here, we've got this lovely little courtyard. The only additions I did since last, uh, well not last week, week before, um, I added a little ATM kiosk as well as a few ATMs across the park because I realised we basically had none. And uh, one of the main reasons guests weren't riding rides was because they couldn't afford them. So placed down some ATMs and now everything seems to be hunky dory uh, we've got so yeah we've got the vintage car ride at Worthington Gardens which was named by Crispin one of our discord and YouTube moderators so uh, big shout out for him there were um, quite a few different suggestions that involve gardens uh, so that's why I went with that one we won't ride the vintage cars because it's hella slow but um, you can see the rough layout here plus episode 12 uh, the one before this one is uh, the build process of this and we've got a nice little maintenance shed just off to the side. Someone asked, how did I achieve this? So if I get rid of this middle piece here, instead of joining it there, I just extend it by however much. I can then do what I want with it. The only thing to ensure is after you've done your extension, <laughs> which I forgot to do last time, is make sure that the, the, the ride that the ride thinks it's riding, <laughs> if that makes sense, is the one you want it to be. Uh, the first time I tested it, um, the, the cars went into the shed and just hit the wall. So that's not what you want. So yeah, just make sure that after you've built your extension, um, the ride that it's following is complete. Anyway, let's open that back up so they can... Of course, they've got to test it again. Okay, into the shed. Um, so yeah, carry the rail through here where they would line up all the cars at night to put them all away, close to shutter down. And of course, maintenance staff can do work to the vehicles if and when is needed. Now this fire exit, as I was just saying, they all lead somewhere. So this one, if we go through here, leads you to this little alleyway. And then you might be thinking, well, what does that one take you to? Uh, if you go through this one, it takes you into guest services right back at the entrance. So really good. So staff can easily, um, well, park all the way over there, he says, <laughs> nice and easy. But then staff can come to, through guest services through this fire exit um, and then they can easily get into the workshop for there if that's where they're based um, this is access into the ride area and that will also take you through if you want to dive through some bushes um, through to the maintenance shed for the train 
So again, same method as I just showed you with the vintage cars, the train. Oh, hello camera. The train will follow around here, but then we have this little one jutting off here into the maintenance shed where the train can have a nap and they can do some work underneath it. So very happy with how this little area came out. This is again one of the first ones we've done. Didn't notice that. Uh oh. Got some clipping bushes there, but never mind. We can fix that later. On the other side of this courtyard, we have our Ferris wheel, Worthington wheel, which was named by Artsy Gamer TCGS and Danny Bannon. I mentioned in uh, episode 12 that this was probably one of the first rides to be brought in, um, and this would be one of the oldest areas of the park. So we've got the the old cobblestones and just very minimalistic, nothing too modern in this area, just very old fashioned, traditional British stuff. So yeah, I mean, this would probably be my favorite area to be honest, so somewhere to, to sit, get some shade, chill out, have a little lunch and just relax for a little bit. Okay, so if we cross the tracks here, past the bunker, round the corner, we will come to Missile which is our good old drop tower. What park is complete without one? So this is once again uh, themed similar to the bunker. Obviously the bunker is all based around um, a nuclear missile going off. So it makes perfect sense and also means it doubles up the uh, missile on the roof for both attractions. All the theming for this ride would have been directly taken from the bunker so uh, all these bits are taken from the inside of the silo for example they probably would have seen this triangle of space out here and just wanted to shove something in there so a drop tower is a nice petite ride uh, that can fit in a very small space okay just across the way and opposite the entrance to risk you'll find our stage uh, so this would be for any live events uh, corporate stuff that kind of thing um, originally this foundation uh, i was going to put a flat ride on it um, but there were, I couldn't find any nice way of getting the pathing either down here or if the path were to go out this way it would be going way too far away from the ride itself. So in the end I opted for the stage but it, it came out really nice, I'm really happy with that and we'll have a look at the backstage area in just a bit. This brings us nicely down to Main Street where we have a lovely KFC on the left and a Starbucks on the right. I am obviously not sponsored by either of these companies, um, but I'd be happy to be. I mean, free KFC and Starbucks would be my dream. You don't even have to pay me. I would just have KFC and Starbucks, honestly, hands down. Here's another one of the ATMs I added. Um, obviously a good place on Main Street where you want people to, to pay money, money, money. Capitalism, great. A lot of this park is TMTK. There's just stuff that can't be created in the game like this wonderful starbucks logo this lettering i wish there was just vanilla fonts in the game but there aren't people have made some great stuff with the uh, art shapes but if you just want some nice simple text uh, i think this is an hydro font it's just um, really handy especially when it comes to the smaller details like these little chalkboards it just can't be achieved any other way you, you could also use a, um, a screen with a custom image is a possibility with stuff like this but I really like the look of this. People were asking me what percentage of the park is TMTK. I don't think that much, to be honest. A question I can answer is, what's the piece count? Uh, which someone did ask me. And it's not as much as you might think. So the whole park, including the exterior, is only 17,500, as you can see there. Um, so, I mean, I build with FPS in mind at all times. There are other creators with <laughs> massive high-end PCs that I'm very jealous of who can make one building 10,000 pieces at least. And and that's great, but um, I've seen sections of buildings that have a higher piece count than this entire park does. So I think there's something to say in that. If we continue up Main Street on the left here, this is just um, what I imagine would be a storage building. Um, so there'd be a bunch of fridges, freezers, and then just um, ambient storage for all of the food products on Main Street. The backstage area of that we'll see when we go around to the backstage of the stage. On the right, one of my favourite pieces of this park is the JD Weatherspoon 
free house pub. Very early on, I knew I wanted to have some kind of uh, pub in the park. It then suddenly dawned on me that <laughs> what is the the epitome of um, cheap beer in the UK, and that is a Weatherspoon. Obviously, you you would never find a pub or or very likely any alcohol in a park for obvious reasons. But I couldn't not put a, a Weatherspoons into Worthington Farms, so that's that. For anyone who doesn't know, they're often put into very bizarre buildings like churches or old cinemas, old banks, that kind of thing. That's their thing. So I figure, why wouldn't they try and shove a pub into a theme park? Just a public toilet over here, another ATM, and then this path here just takes you back around to the back of the bunker and towards the Ferris wheel, as you can see. Here is our second station of the two stations, the Main Street station. Uh, nice long queue. This one isn't a whole building compared to the other one. This is just a facade, so around the back here is just just bushes. But this is really nice. I love this backstage area. Just generator and weeds and all sorts. So happy with that. Uh, in the middle here, we have a ice cream hut. They're just doing a change of shifts. There we go. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Josh Winter commented saying there's no door and you were right so i added a door look are you happy are you happy are you happy i used a door from the ghostbusters pack and used some hydro beams just to give the impression that they had to cut around the uh, the nestle decal and just kind of like re-stick that on if that makes sense i think that came out really nicely and yes there's one on the inside too so there we go they will never use it because they hop over the thing but for health and safety there would obviously be a door for them to use. Lastly in this little plaza we have the traditional carousel. Um, it doesn't even have a name as you can see it's just called carousel. I didn't even ask one because it's just a carousel nobody would ever call it anything different. Um, you get ones called like galloping horses or some nonsense but it's always just gonna be a carousel so just call it a carousel. Just around the corner here we have another service road. This one will take you down to the back of Main Street so this is the other side to that storage area I showed you before. And then this shutter will take you into the back of KFC. So that'll be their little loading area and kitchens. As you can see, that's just the back end of that. Round here, past the skip and the truck, will take you down into the backstage area of the stage. So we've got power, cables, and a whole bunch of stuff from the studios pack, which is a lifesaver when making anything backstage. And then this is our little performance space. Got all the moving lights, the wash lights, and then some behind us, monitors on the floor, and then the line arrays up there. But yes, this came out really nicely, I think. Nice view again of the Enterprise. <laughs> all, uh, all the nicest views are from staff-only areas, which is quite funny. Speaking of our Enterprise, it is called Whiz Bang, which was named by C. Wild just a simple cattle pen queue here and then because the queue opens up into a little wider area here I added a little lady person to to help manage the queue just because it made more sense rather than trying to attempt to make some fencing work with this weird angle just figure she would hold the queue here and then let them on when the operator gave the go-ahead another little plaza with the wonderful Victorian tile probably one of my favorite pieces beside beams of course these fences are all new since last week because obviously we don't want people running onto train tracks. That's never a good combination. Which brings us round to some toilets on the left and Funland on the right. So there was a little conversation in Discord um, saying about because Funland is a bit pathetic, a bit low budget, they said it'd be funny if one of the letters was kind of falling off. So there we go. That is for you. I can't remember who said it now, but there we go. Let's get across before the train gets here into Funland, which is, as I just said, very low budget, uh, a bunch of temporary funfair rides, similar to what Alton Towers recently did, just to up their flat ride count, which is fine. And I thought Worthington Farms could do the exact same thing. So these rides will be brought in by their owners and run by them too. So we'll get to their living area in a second. We've got a carbon copy of the ice cream stand, some 
very obvious power and maintenance gubbins that they make no attempt to hide. Just on the other side of the scrambler, you will find this lovely little campsite with uh, the accommodation for the traveling showmen and showwomen with their rides. So these are a couple of porter cabins uh, that would be equipped with a uh, bathroom, kitchen and bedrooms. But I want to give the feel like this is a nice friendly atmosphere where they all know each other and they have a little beer around the campfire. A long while back I made a ride based on the Walking Dead game by Telltale and this is the RV from uh, season one of that game. Uh, but it felt like it worked really well here so that's why that is there. So I'm pretty sure, let's just have a little aerial view that is the full tour of Worthington Farms. It took us 13 weeks to complete, but it is done. The only thing left to do is, of course, ride the train. And so let's hop on the Worthington Express, shall we? Where do we sit? This seems like a good enough place. You better not sit near me. There we go. Stop it, woman. What are you doing? Where did you go? Where are you? Where did she go? Am I her? Is she behind me? Oh, I'm not on the back. Oh, I don't know. So this is where we get a lovely view of the boomerang. There we go. Really nice shot there. Swooping seagull to our right. Little sneak peek view into the staff area there. We've got our top spin to the right and then to our left we of course have Funland. You always have to say Funland really ecstatically. Now to our right, you get a nice glimpse of Whiz Bang. As we pull into the Main Street Station. I'm now realising that we've got uh, some clipping pillars. So there we go. Add that to my to-do list. As we leave the station, we've got the back of the bunker on our right. And to the left, we'll see the Ferris wheel. get a nice view of the front of the bunker just over there and then to the left is the vintage cars but you can't quite see past the fence there's the maintenance shed for the train across the path back into the station and that is the Worthington Express So there we have it. That is Worthington Farms complete. It's been an absolute pleasure to build this and to have all of you along with me. I mean, when I started this park, I think I was less than 100 subscribers. And at this point now, we're just about to reach 1,200, which is just insane. So thank you all very much. Um, thank you for giving me the motivation to finish this park. Believe it or not, this is actually my first finished park which is probably quite easy to believe because I think that's the, the case for most people. Um, so I really appreciate you giving me the push to, to finish something for once. You might be wondering what's coming next. Right at this moment, I can't give too much away, but I have two projects in the works at the moment, both extremely exciting and I'm really excited to bring them to you. As for a time frame, I'm hoping to get the next project going in the next couple of weeks, so make sure you stay tuned. So there we are, Worthington Farms is complete. It's time to say goodbye. You didn't think we could say goodbye to the park just yet, right? As with any real park, they change and adapt over time. They get all dressed up for certain holidays or events. 
Old rides stop working, new shiny ones are brought in. So stay tuned for seasonal updates to Worthington Farms, where you'll get to see our beloved park in a whole new light.